Oh, is that finished? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that was uh, John... I was doing something. I'm sorry about that. John Edgar Vaux. Uh, that's a song called Hairy Man. And that's a track called... Uh, no, it's called Hairy Man. It's from a CD called uh, Western Notes. Uh, thank you for sitting in yesterday, Sean. Where's he from? Um, he's from Enniskillen. It's a fellow called Martin Corrigan. Very good. I, I met him one time. And uh, Did you ever tell the story about that? No. I one time... Uh, a friend of mine from Enniskillen, uh, the actor Kieran McMenamin, Yes. I was supposed to meet Kieran one time to have a drink. We were talking about future projects, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. And, uh, well, uh, it was a little play you were to be in. Yeah, that's right. So he was with this guy who was asleep. And you were also to be on a pantomime. That's right, yeah. Many is the thing I was supposed to be in, but it mm-hmm. never, never transpired. Sorry. The fellow was asleep, and the fellow had drink taken. And the fellow was asleep the entire time I was with him, and we put him in a taxi. I said, by the way, who's that guy who's asleep there? He said, that's. Martin Corrigan, <laughs> that's the singer. So I've never actually seen him awake or conscious, so to speak. Uh, did you have a nice uh, time program yesterday? Was it okay? Yes. I think well, so. I, I think hear so. different. Yeah, I know. I was waiting for it. I've got a letter here. It says, what a groan of disappointment erupted all over Ulster yesterday when people switched on their radios only to hear Sean Coyle discuss going on a holiday with Stephen Nolan. Any truth in this? No, and I, I must say that... It was a bit much this morning, Stevens talking about his holidays. I didn't realise I was part of it yesterday morning. You see, you, you were part of it on I didn't realise, and I apologised to the people. Didn't, he, he said to me, if I met him on holiday, would I be pleased? <laughs> Stephen, oh, wanted the, silly. Stephen wanted the two of you to hire a caravan. Any truth in that? <sighs> Mr. Coyle demurred and held out for a one-star hotel. That's very generous of you. How this will play out only God and the news the world know, both men's mobile phones having been hacked into. Mr Coyles was sinking like a stone when suddenly a big story broke yesterday. A weeping distraught woman came on the phone and screamed, My hens are eating their own eggs! Yes. Did you have that? Yes. A cannibalistic moment? Yes. The switchboard lit up like a Christmas tree. Many and varied were the cures offered more grit, less grit, cover the eggs with mustard, put up a sign saying, Don't eat your eggs. Then Jordy, newly shaved and sheared, said the only cure was to take the hens to spec savers, get them fitted with special hen glasses. If you don't believe me, ask the man behind the glass. Is all this true? All true. All well, we talked about hen glasses before, mm-hmm. and it, they are something that are, is, is available. Exist. Yes, they do exist. Tell me, what were you buying yesterday in Belfast? I wasn't really buying anything. Yes, you were in boots. What were you buying? I was in boots. Yeah. Oh, I was actually. Yes, yeah. I know you were. What were you buying? Never you mind. It's an item of personal hygiene. I, do, I know what it was. No, you don't know what yes, it was. Yes, I do. Don't be saying whatever it was. I do. Because the people there mightn't understand. Yes, <coughs> you know, Janet knows as well. Well, tell, well uh, I'm not we, ashamed We know, it. the team know. Okay. But I'm, I forbid you to say what it is. There's nothing wrong with that. There is everything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, there is. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't mean, want you to say it, okay? <laughs> I, I'll reveal maybe at the end of the programme what I bought in boots yesterday. No. Janet said it's working. What's working? <laughs> How does she know? <laughs> <laughs> I was bound up. <laughs> I was... Uh, anyway, never mind, Dan. Never, never you mind, Dan. Uh, Nolan was also uh, under... Tr- I heard Nolan's programme for the first time yesterday. It's a frightening thing. Have you ever heard his whole programme? I heard some of it yesterday. I had to listen to it. Because At the end of it, I was so angry, I wanted to go out and thump somebody. That must be the way everyone else feels. Oh, my God. But he was on, uh, Gregory Campbell was a on with him for How an much hour. money do you earn? How much money do you earn? What? A, well, right, you, you, you're right. Right, Mr. Anderson, how much, the people of Northern Ireland want to know how much money you earn, Mr. Anderson. I don't think that's entirely relevant. But I mean, of course after, it is. It's not, because the I'll tell you what. The people of Northern Ireland know exactly I, how much I earn. They want to know how much you earn, Mr. Anderson. How much money do you earn? Are you prepared to tell the people of Northern Ireland now how much money you earn? It's important. Well, of course I'm prepared to tell them, but as well, a matter of fact, on, my hands are tied. I'm now. forbidden by my contract. And the BBC, they say that I'm not allowed because it will, well, it, it will break my contract if I tell you how much I earn. I would love to tell you, but I can't. Is it true, Mr Anderson, that you're on a three-year contract, a five-year contract, a one-year contract? We need to know. We need clarity. 
Well, you see, I don't think it's any of your business because, after all, you know, I... You but know, everyone in Northern Ireland is, is discussing this. Can you imagine down in the pubs at night, men are gathering round in little corners, calling other men into the toilets? Have you heard how much he's earning? Have you heard how much she's earning? It's a topic of conversation in Northern Ireland. Well, I don't feel as if I should get into Everyone's that interested. Of... Bus drivers, train drivers, taxi drivers, they're all talking about how much money you earn. All right, then, I'll tell you. How much money? 120 quid a week with my board. That shut you up, didn't it? Excellent. That's what it is. Now we know. Now there's no ambiguity. We have clarity. Thank uh, you. And I have board. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit... What was be- it all about yesterday? I have no what idea. What's that all about? It's about, about 50 minutes of it yesterday. It's about entertainment, John. Don't you realise? Gregory has sensed this. I have to admit to being away, I only dipped back into your show last week. Nothing has changed. Still the Elvis story. And now the saga has been raised once again. People are beginning to realise that we're repeating everything. Sean still interrupts. Still Jerry plays the wrong track. Still Jerry refuses to play requests and becomes quite haughty when asked to. Still listeners moan about the choice of music. Still people complain about not hearing the music. The voice is too loud. Not hearing the voice because the music's too loud. I must say this consistency not to alter heartens me immensely because I realise I have missed nothing. Rather than bore you, I will get to the point. I'm not asking for a request. No, I'm not. I just would hope that you may pass on my thanks to all the kind and caring staff at Ward 6B Withers Musgrave Park Hospital where I had the pleasure to stay recently. I am now in recovery and doing well with my new hip. Did you ever think that you might need a new hip? Seriously. Uh, seriously, I don't think I will. I've got good joints. Have you? Mm. Are you not the same? Like from, no, I'm, I'm serious now. Like your, your mother was fairly supple, wasn't she? And my, my How mother do you know from, that? I knew your mother. Did you? I didn't know that. Yes. My mother was very supple. Yes. Yeah, my yeah. father was quite supple as yes, well. Yes, you see, and so are you. I am to, supple. To a degree. To although a deg- you're becoming less. <laughs> <laughs> I dread the ball pun- now bent and down. Stop it. No, I've noticed that. I've noticed that with you. That you're come to the stage now, when you bend down, you open your legs. <laughs> well made, Janet Titter. Well, I noticed that when I bend down, I have to hold on to something. No, but you, you open your legs. Your, oh. knees, your knees part. <laughs> and that's bad. That's a bad sign, you know. I'd be trying to get people to do that since I was 15. <laughs> I dread the puns that may... <laughs> I dread the puns that may now come, but as an occasional dipper in, I can cope. He's worried about the puns that may come when he mentions they had a new hip, but mercifully I cleared away from him. I leave the choice of music to you with my fingers crossed. Sometimes, just sometimes, you do play nice music, and other times, well, let's leave that subject alone. There was one question being asked, is Sean planning anything big for Jerry's next birthday? Because surely there is some milestone record to be reached due to the utter confusion over birth certificates and events in Jerry's life. We await with bated breath on this, and what is the next what is the next big birthday? Well, there is a big birthday coming up, and I don't really want to talk about it because, well, they don't get much bigger than that. And I noticed that very, very few people... Do you know when people write bated breath? They always spell bated wrongly. If I was to ask you and Janet... Uh, you, you, you caught us out before with this. If I was you to ask you, yes, you and Janet we got it wrong you before. to decide what is the correct spelling of bated... We got it wrong. Try it again. No. Let's see if you've no, learned. No, we got you it wrong. No, we got it wrong the last time you people, caught us. People always say B A I T E D. You caught us. Baited, which is wrong. It's baited, B A T E D. I hate to be a pedant, mm-hmm. but I can't help it. But you know what I've noticed? I mean, I'm been... in I know your knock. Long, I have noticed. Hungry Cookstown, where the stones are tied and the dogs let loose. I don't know why I said that. I know. I'm going to say it again. Come in, Dungannon. I know your knock. Long, hungry Cookstown, where the stones are tied and the dogs let loose. <laughs> right. A sign of age, ageing in men. Uh-huh. And I'm serious about this. I have noticed it. Go ahead. It's, it's when the men have difficulty in bending down. Now, you're not going to leave that. It's, I, I would, know I'm not, no, but, but I've noticed it. I haven't... I haven't, I haven't I, I spotted you it. last Wednesday. I don't care if you spotted me last Wednesday. And do you know what the sign is? What? You know, just, when you're a younger man, you, if you drop something to the floor, you just immediately bend down and you pick it up. But as you get older, you stand and you look over the object that you dropped. A man, and then he'll say, hmm, how do I get down to that? And then 
he will <laughs> he will open his legs stop, stop, a little. Stop, he will, Jared, honestly, stop him. and then he bends down, <laughs> and it's How and it's an awful sight. Stop, right? stop him. Stop it's him not, now. And you're doing it. You did it last Wednesday. And Don't I wave felt, your... Well, Janet, he's waving his finger at I me. felt... I saw the... I came into the, uh, the office and I saw the big Jane. backside looking at me. <laughs> and I thought, I would love to... St- Janet, I would love to hit you a booter. I was going to hit you a booter. Oh, well, thank God for that. Oh, yes. Stop him now. Stop that. You're right, bending down I'm like your father. All right, OK. I'm going to explain. You never saw my father bending down. And another thing I must explain to you now, and mm-hmm. this has never occurred to you, don't you realise that what I'm putting my body through. I'm training. Exactly. Some days, I'm in such agony, I'd be stiff in the mornings. <laughs> no, I am. I, <laughs> I am. And, I, you know, I'm not... See, this is a, a, a process I'm going through. And I'll be like this for some time. Some days I can barely move because I've exerted myself and punished my body so much the day before. And what are you? What are you? Playing golf? Listen, did you see that programme last night about Rory McIlroy? I didn't. Really good no, it was. I didn't see it. He's got such patience. Do you realise that Stephen Watson was with him every minute of the day and he still never cracked up? Is that right? No, but, no, but it's really, really good. He's such a nice guy. No, I'm serious now. He's such a nice guy. But there's only one slight thing that is... It, it, it actually... Something was annoying me all during the programme and I couldn't figure out what it was. Nothing about him because I do genuinely think that he is the nicest guy. And I... Actually, sometimes I, I kind of fear for him because I don't think he wants all this attention. I don't think he reckoned for it and I don't think he bargained for it and I hope to God that he can handle it because I think it's a wee bit too much for him because he's such a... He's, he's a wee fellow who would just like to be home with his dogs. He's got his own golf course, you know. So, so no, I heard about this. He's got his own practice range and it's huge mm-hmm. and he's a very smart guy because, for instance now, if he's playing the British Open... He said he'll ring the groundsman. He'd say, well, well, what are your greens like? And uh, the, the groundsman will say, oh, they're 10.1, 10. 10. or 9.4. Is that centimetres or something? Like? I think, another, I think that's the speed. Is, oh, it, is, is it the speed? I don't know. No, I didn't see the programme. Yeah. No. And, and no. he'd ring up and then he'd say, OK. And then he'd get the guys working for him. Mm-hmm. He'd say, see those greens there? Make them exactly the same as that. So he'd practice away on it. So he's practising on the same conditions that the greens will be in the British Open. Smart guy. But I'm worried for him. And, but there's one thing... There's one thing that uh, is kind of annoying me, and I couldn't figure out what it was until the very end. Do you know the thing? That, do you know what it is? Do you know who you're sounding like? Not sounding like you're going on like. Is, and and, and I mean, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not slagging you or anything. Colombo, yes, sure. no Colombo. That's because he's dead. Aye, but you're you you you're getting rounded. Do you know the way Colombo did with the hands and all? There's just there's just one thing, and then you went on. And you went, it's very good. Thank you. You're wee Colombo Anderson. Sorry, what's the one thing? Colombo Anderson. Colombo Anderson. <laughs> The one thing that annoys me yeah, is that just... whenever you see Rory, you don't know if he's playing golf or not because he, he tends to wear the same clothes off the pitch, off the green, as he wears on the green. It's like, it's like seeing uh, Frank Lampard going out with Christine Blakely wearing his shirt and his shorts and his football boots. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a bit cruel. No, but it's not cruel. But it's just it's, he just looks always he's, he looks as if he's wearing the same clothes when he's playing and when he's not playing. Well, that says a lot for him. No, it does. Yes, actually. I'm not, no, but I'm saying it's yes. but it's actually it's, yeah. throw, it's throwing me because I, I look at him. He's walking down the street and mm. he looks exactly the same as if when he's, he's got the same wee hat on and all. That's good. He that's looks good. exactly the same, yeah. and that's why I fear for him because nobody else would do that. Every, everybody else would look different, you know, and have a different image, but he doesn't care. He's just a fellow wearing a shirt and a pair of trousers and a wee baseball cap. And I want him to stay like that. As boys like Stephen Watson's going to change him. No, they Annoying won't. him all no. the time. Oh, Stephen means well. He does mean well. He just doesn't mm. know when to stop. No. He saw me the other day, you know, and he said, I believe you'll give me a hard time. I ran under the lift. <laughs> I ran away from him. <laughs> I ran away from him. And another thing, you mentioned Colombo Anderson. Yes. Do you know what it reminded me of? Yeah. Do you know... That uh, do you know that there are two hospitals in Belfast, two maternity hospitals, and one of them will tell you if you're pregnant, not you, but maybe Janet. Mm-hmm. If Janet, if you go there, they will tell you if you're expecting a girl or a boy or not, and the other one won't. Well, I'm not going to mention any names. But why? Why Think, won't they tell you? Because apparently, if you want in to know, days gone by, a, a, a woman went down and said, "What am I going to have? You're going to have a wee girl." Right? Yeah. So she went off and bought all the pink things. All the stuff you get for a wee right, girl. Right, Then out popped a little boy. And she was angry and she sued the hospital. 
Because you said you had to go and get blue stuff. You know, can you think about it? I, all, all you'd be concerned about would that it would be a healthy baby, wouldn't yeah. it? But yeah. you, some people are like that. But there's one hospital who will tell you. They'll say, you're going to have a boy, missus, or else I can't tell you now. You have to wait and see until it pops out. Do you know, it was the same with me. You know, they didn't know what you were going to be? No, when I was born, they didn't know if I was a boy or a girl. And, you know, I'm still not sure myself. <laughs> There's a wee call. <laughs> Look, Ken, who took away the labels? What labels? There was labels on this desk showing you which thing was which. Somebody You've took them away. You've been sitting there for over 25 years and you need labels? <laughs> the Shearing of Geordie Tuft. I've got an epic poem here. Something's lurking in the forest. To venture in there, none will dare. Could it be the wild man from Borneo peering out from long grey hair? Some say it is a Sasquatch, walking upright like a man. Others call it Bigfoot as it lumbers through the land. Could it be a grizzly bear, a circus left behind? Could it be the devil in disguise or a troll out of its mind? Situation, 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 situation. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be a grizzly bear, a circus left behind? Could it be the devil in disguise, or a situation out of its mind? Next day at dawn, wee Willie John yelled in a voice so gruff. Creature in the forest, boys, is the oracle, Geordie Tuft. Later that day, Mayor Dizzy Ray said, This is what I feared. Old Geordie must be trapped tonight, then taken away and sheared. Leave it to me, said Captain McGee. He fought in two world wars. Where he lost an eye, an ear, a toe, and a pair of red flannel drawers. He put a clockwork thrush beside a bush to lure the tufter out. Out staggered the ancient mariner, full of sherry, whiskey, stout. When Geordie saw the net, the whiskery pet ran off with a start. A tranquilizer dart soon brought him down with a feeble, despairing fart. Get back, you boy! yelled Geordie. When he saw the flashing shears, Geordie rolled up like a fetus. Full of irrational fears, the sheep shearer grabbed old Geordie. Geordie uttered childlike cries. The shearer said, Hold still, you boy, keep her lit till we get out. Like thistle down, the hare sped off, carried on a zephyr breeze. It gave an old woman asthma and tickled the wee dote's knees. Then beneath the hare, all debonair, lay the features we all know, the man who gets up at night. To utilise his poe. Looking grand was the countryman, Dr. Doolittle, I presume, the man who knew about Jay's fluid before he left the womb. I let myself go, Geordie cried, and that I greatly rue. It's no good dunging out your bed, lest you dung yourself out too. There's a man <laughs> on two. <laughs> I'm a nimby. Do you know what a nimby is? No. Not in my backyard. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Hello, Jerry. Oh, Jordy. <laughs> well, I believe you were on yesterday talking about the hens eating their own eggs. I know, but I, I had a sun night last night. Had you? I was in Hewitt's Bar. In Belfast? Aye. John Hewitt's Bar? Donegal Street? Uh -huh. Are you serious? I'm not. I'm telling you the truth. Fantastic. What were you doing there? Well, one or two want to see me. Did you make an appearance? I did indeed, and a clean shirt on that. My God. Uh -huh. Is it come uh -huh. to it's come to this? So are you, are you saying that you were asked there by the people who own the place? Yes, they phoned me up. Fantastic. And they asked you to come along and just hold court? Yes, and they sent the boiler cabs a taxi to put me. Did they? Uh -huh. Well, did you pick a fight with anybody? No, 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 it's no not... fighting, no biting, no kicking. It's not like you. Did you get on with everybody? Uh, and do you know what's what terrible up in price, Jerry? What's terrible up in price? Fish. What? Fish. Fish? Oh, I see. Did you have a fish uh, supper fin, after? The fun collie and, and the cod. Right. Uh, did you have a fish supper after? No, I bought a bit of fresh fish home. Of home with you? Where did you buy this fish? You don't know? Oh, uh, we buy going around. <laughs> hand to lay, hand to lay, hand to lay. You know? Sorry, I missed that. Uh, are you talking about a fellow selling fresh fish? Yes. Yes. All right. And what was he, how was he going again? Johnny, will you listen to translate this for me? Well, how was he going? Hand alive, hand alive. Hand alive, hand alive, hand alive. Heron's alive. Ah. Oh, you're great at that. Ah. I would never have guessed that. Mm. 
Give us that again, well, Jody. Why, why, why are they calling the herrings alive when they're dead? Because it, it, it means they're fresh. fresh. They're, they're, they're oh, pretending yeah, that they're alive. They're they're just, the herrings day. just dead. Herrings just dead. Just killed. Yeah, just killed. Know, herrings just killed. Fresh. Just killed. It's, yeah. it's easy enough to say, herrings alive, herrings alive, herrings alive. Herrings alive, herrings alive. Herring alive, herring alive. Buy them when they're fresh. Buy them when they're fresh. <laughs> Love Buy that. them when they're fresh. Ah! Mm, you see how you can translate. Yeah. You're like, Brian Kennedy at Van Morrison. Uh, Remember Brian Kennedy oh, should translate everything Van said. Van would get up the stage and go, there's a, there's a call for I love Jordan. you, darling. <laughs> Till the end of time. <laughs> Since I first met you, <laughs> I've been on my... There's <laughs> something. <laughs> yes? Uh, John Walker. Yes? There's men and a half deer. The bottom half... What is Sean? What the, the bottom, John, John Walker's been uh, mending the bottom half of the half door. Yeah. What does that mean? The half door in Jordy's house. Oh, sorry, it's a man in working, is there? Ah, John Walker. I thought you were talking about the Radio 2 DJ or whiskey. No, John, John Walker. Very Walker. difficult for me. John Walker's a man who. Yes, right. man, now for us, Tony the Goat. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, that, yeah, I know, but listen, uh, let's pursue this other thing. There's a question for Jordy on one. I'll get to that eventually. Yeah. Uh, now, here's a very interesting thing. Now, you've been invited. To, what you made last yeah. night, Jordy, is what's known in the yeah. business as a personal oh. appearance. Well, that's, thank you. Well, you see, this might be a whole new career for you. Oh, you know, you never would know. You see, yeah. I mean, you should charge a small amount of money. Are you going to Valley Castle a year? I don't think so. Thing. Hugo's going there, isn't he? Hugo does all the outside broadcast now because I can't scream the way I used to. I think he does oh, most of it. Oh, you're not doing too bad. <laughs> you're, well, still, you're still getting your moisturizer. <laughs> <laughs> I am indeed. Uh, both ends. And listen, <laughs> but listen, but personal appearance, you should, charge, you should charge a small amount of money and give me 10%. And next time a man rings you up and you say, well, I'm free on the... Mm-hmm. 14th of August, uh, there'll be I need expenses, of I course. Know, Jerry, Ask him for 100 sure, quid. But... Ask him for 100 quid expenses, they'll give it to you. And, and then I you'll know, get down but... to the bar and then you can stand there and talk to everybody. That'll but bring sure the crowds in. Oh, they the taxi and all up. And well, that's, I suppose, that's right. They fed me well and watered me well. And... Yeah. Well, what did you get a bit of fish for if they fed you? Oh, and the fish, too. Oh, oh, they got the fish for you? Ah. Oh. All right, then. So, so you couldn't have done much better. Well, listen, next time you've got a person appearance like that, tell me about it, and I'll alert the listeners, and they can go along and buy you a drink. Well, you come too. No. <laughs> I've been in a pub with you How's before. How's your horse riding going? It's, I'm not horse riding at all. Well, I I'm sorry, I stopped horse riding about three or four years ago. Did you? Uh-huh. It was too hard on me, rump. Hey, so you won't be a mounted policeman, Jerry Anderson. <laughs> no, that's Sean. He's going to become a mounty. There's a call. For, a gentleman wants to ask Jordan a question. Look, there's Where that whole thing now? happening. Hello, good morning, sir. Hello, is that Jerry? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jordy can hear you. I wonder if you asked Jordy when is the good weather going to come in. Jordy, we've had some controversy about this before. A man, uh, as you obviously heard, when is the good weather going to come? So the good uh, weather's yeah, here. Yeah, uh, yeah it was here yesterday. It's gone again. It was here for yeah, one day. Have what you call an Indian summer. That's September, though. You are no, I. Uh, you don't get no. an Indian summer until September. It'll happen in November. Oh, in November. Okay, uh, I suppose you're right. I'm no, going to have a summer in November. Yes. <laughs> that'll yeah, be bad news. For, that'll be bad news for Guy yeah, Fox. Sure, they just flooded out. They all flooded out. Uh, that's yeah, the yeah. global warming. Global warming. It's the, the what do you call the Nino? <laughs> Whatever you call that. Uh, well, Jordy doesn't know is the answer. I have a look at wee calls here and they're very upset at the minute. It must be the temperature, the different temperatures in the weather. So I wonder what could you do with the wee calves? November. That's what I... Did you hear what that man said, Jordy? November. Say that again. He, wasn't, he didn't hear you. I have a few wee calves and they're very upset. It must be the weather changing and stuff. So what could you do with them? Jordy, did you hear well, that? Well, do, do you know what to do? <laughs> Feed them and water them and close them up for a week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, that seems draconian, but uh, I don't see no reason why I should doubt this uh, agricultural advice. Feed them and water them and close them up for a week? Ah. Suppose they want to go to the toilet or the movies or well, something. can't they do it where they are? I suppose you're right. Uh, is that, does that advice make any sense to you, sir? I have roosters here at the minute, too, and they're all upset, too. It must be that, I don't know what's wrong with them. They're crowing away here. Maybe there's no more lead in their pencils. Could be oh, yeah. that. What do you think, Jordy? They need it like a hen. <laughs> they're frustrated. They're no different. They're no different from us. No, they're frustrated. They're frustrated. Yes, because I have no hens here. They're not just roosters. Well, what, what are you running there, gentleman's club? So what? I, 
Would you help raise our hands? Jordan? I could. I have some of the best current roosters north, south, east, or west of the border. It's hands he's looking for. Have you any hands? No, I'm no hands. Well, yours are the same. Walking around smoking. Looking... Do you mind how you used to live your old, what they called them? Excuse the pawn shop. Excuse me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you mind that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't need it much. No, but... Well, interpret that crow for I us. I wouldn't then. call that a good crow. Rusty is the... Uh, <laughs> That's good. Uh, Jordy is the rooster whisperer. So if I could get Jordy hands... If Jordy could get me hands... Jordy, hold on a second. Jordy, those roosters seem to respond to your call there. Could you try <laughs> that again? <laughs> I think we'll put a stop to this now. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Right, Thank you. Right. Goodbye. That was, you, know, that's, you can only take so much of that. Thank you. <laughs> sometimes I wonder uh, sometimes what we're doing here. <laughs>